Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are paying a visit to asteroid Ryugu, thanks to the Japanese Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. Over the last few days, we've been watching better and better images as it gets closer and closer, and the asteroid looks kind of interesting. It's apparently spinning fast enough to create this uh, angular ridge around the equator where uh, loose debris will collect. As of Friday morning, the spacecraft will be about 40 kilometers away and moving at less than uh, 9 centimeters per second and as it approaches this object. And since the asteroid is less than a kilometer across, it's expected the escape velocity would be about 1 centimeter per second. So uh, Hayabusa 2 is still very hyperbolic. The spacecraft actually carries a bunch of really interesting experiments. Actually, some of the experiments are repeats from the previous Hayabusa 1, which didn't quite work as expected. Hayabusa 2 adds something called the Small Carry-On Impactor, a device which would not look out of place in an anti-tank weapon. It uses a few kilograms of explosive to turn a lump of copper into a high-velocity penetrating impactor. The idea is partly to see what happens when you shoot an asteroid at 2 kilometers per second, but also to expose uh, subsurface layers so that they can sample them. Now, if you think shooting an asteroid sounds dangerous, well, the asteroid's probably got, not going to mind, but the debris that flies off could be deadly to Hayabusa too. So the way this works is they're going to deploy the impactor in a descent trajectory. The spacecraft is then going to move a little bits away, drop a deployable camera, and then finally move around to the other side of the asteroid so it is shielded from any ejecta that might be emitted. These cameras are actually pretty cool pieces of space hardware. They were originally developed for the Icarus mission, which was a solar sail. They wanted to deploy these and make sure that the sail was uh, viewed correctly or deployed correctly. They are about the size of your hand. And in fact, they are, in theory, the smallest objects ever or the smallest spacecraft ever used in interplanetary space. They would operate for maybe 15 to 20 minutes and sending data back to the parent spacecraft so it could be sent back to Earth. The spacecraft also carries four other deployable rovers. There's the Mobile Asteroid Scout, or Mascot. That's a German rover which will land on the surface. And then there are three Japanese-built Minerva rovers. Now, we call them rovers, but they don't move around on wheels. They move around using, uh, you know, inertial tricks. They kind of hop around rather than roll around. Imagine if you have a flywheel, you can slowly spin it up to speed, and then if you brake it very quickly, all that angular momentum gets kicked into the body and it gets to flip around. Now, there's variations on this technique that they're going to use, but it means that they can actually move around in the incredibly low gravity on the surface of this asteroid. But all of these shenanigans on the surface will have a time limit because this is a sample return mission. And yeah, they're going to go down and try to grab some pieces of the asteroid. Now, they, what they do is they basically fire a little bullet into the surface and then debris comes up and hopefully some pieces end up going into the collection horn and then get put inside a, a sample return package. And then when the time is right, the spacecraft will leave the asteroid, return to Earth, and if everything goes according to plan, the sample package will be dropped to re-enter over Australia, where it should be easy to find, assuming the local wildlife doesn't get it first. And in case you're wondering, yes, Hayabusa 2 is the sequel to Hayabusa, which uh, was a spacecraft that also went to an asteroid. It went to asteroid Itokawa. Its landers, Minerva rovers, didn't reach the surface, unfortunately, and the gun mechanism that was supposed to uh, cause you know, dust to be released didn't happen. However, they did actually collect about 1,500 tiny pieces of space dust that came from the asteroid, and those were returned successfully to Australia. As I understand it, there's a certain amount of, you know, Japanese pride over this mission. And uh, not only were you able to buy models of it, but at least one company produced uh, an anthropomorphic anime girl version of the spacecraft, which I know is the most Japanese thing ever. I love it. So watch this space and maybe you'll get to find out what happens when you shoot an asteroid with an anti-tank round. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.